Yeah. Great, I'm even recording. All right. <laughs> Thanks everyone for coming and uh, we're very glad to have you. We're so proud of these students and the work that they did this summer and I'm so excited to have them share it with you guys. They've already shared it with Caitlin and me and um, we grilled them, asked them a whole lot of questions. So go ahead and feel free to ask them questions because they have really interesting things to say. So let's start with Anne, um, who did a virtual <coughs> program with Emerson, uh, LGBTQ plus advocate in Ecuador. Thank you. So hi, everybody. Thank you for coming. Um, my name is Anne Basquill. I'm a senior nursing and Spanish major. And today I'm going to talk to you about my past summer experience as a Kaya intern. Next slide, please. So before I jump into the presentation, I just wanted to give you guys a few snapshots of how I spent my past summer. Um, so I did a completely virtual internship um, with an organization abroad in Ecuador called Fundacion Equidad. And up there, kind of in the left-hand corner, you can see the screenshot of um, one of our Zoom meetings with our local buddies, where we were able to do a cultural exchange uh, twice, meeting twice a week, where we learned about their food, their culture, um, their history, politics, kind of like the whole, the whole thing. Uh, the picture down below is actually a picture that one of my supervisors took herself. She was really into photography, and she was really great at um, displaying the natural beauty of Ecuador, and I thought it was amazing. She was really able to portray it through um, the computer, even though we were kind of halfway around the world for most of us. Um, and then finally, on the right-hand side is one of the traditional Ecuadorian dis dishes called yapingachos, that on our very first night of our cultural exchange, we actually were able to learn how to make ourselves and kind of like cook alongside with our local buddies. So overall, it was a really great experience. I'm gonna kind of talk more about how I got there and what I did. So kind of getting into the logistics of what it was, I did my um, internship through Kaya International Internship and Volunteering. What I really liked about it was that there were so many different types of opportunities um, and so many different places in the world that you can either choose to intern or volunteer. Um, so when I was looking for a program that kind of fit my areas of study of healthcare with nursing and Spanish, it was really easy for me to find kind of like a placement. Um, also, just due to COVID travel restrictions um, with Emerson and everything, it was really easy to, for me to find uh, an online internship, kind of like on a shorter notice, which really ended up working out well for me because um, I was able to continue working my regular job at home, having a fairly normal summer, while also kind of uh, being like across the world in a way, while I was able to meet all these amazing people. Um, and then the thing I also loved about it was that there's the opportunity to take foreign language to really immerse yourself in the culture and to really um, get a deeper appreciation and enhance your experience as you're doing the work. Oh, next slide, please. So just finding an internship, the things that were most beneficial for me were getting help from career development. They really helped me to work on my resume um, and solidify it, um, to help me display all my strengths. Those were the, that's the resume that I submitted to the different organizations I was looking for throughout the process. And also the, the resume that I was submitting for like grants, um, scholarships and other funding, which were very beneficial for helping me to kind of like afford that. Um, also reaching out to global engagement, asking them questions about uh, deadlines, opportunities, kinds of different organizations to work with and seeing um, what connections we've had in the past. Um, that was very helpful. <laughs> Um, another thing I did was I asked my friends and my peers um, who I knew throughout my major and the department um, what their experience was like going abroad, what organizations they did like, um, kind of what to expect. So it was really helpful um, on that end. And then of coordinating with my professors, it really helped me to get ahead on my credits to kind of understand how the internship I was going to do would fit into both my areas of study and really connect it back to my schoolwork. So just on a list of don'ts, uh, don't wait until the last minute. <laughs> I think I started asking questions around my sophomore year and then I ended up completing it just the summer before my senior year. So there was a lot of work that goes into it. Um, and then of course, if you're early, then you're able to apply for funding. Um, 
well, that will help you expand your opportunities. Um, and that was really helpful for me. And I don't think I would have been able to afford the experience without that. And lastly, just don't doubt your own abilities. I think I definitely had some reservations going into the summer. I was a little bit nervous, but um, the organization was really helpful. And there's an amazing support network here on campus with global engagement, with your advisors, with career development and everything. And so I was definitely 100% ready to take this on. So kind of getting into what I actually did this summer. Um, so I worked with Fundacion Equidad in Quito, Ecuador. And so this is an NGO uh, organization working towards improving equality and increasing access to healthcare for LGBTQ plus individuals. So my role was a research assistant. So I helped to kind of write a report and analyze the data that they gave me to better understand and analyze health disparities for the LGBTQ plus population. So um, their goal is to provide better education, screening and testing for um, all members of the LGBTQ plus population so that they can improve health and healthcare while reducing the stigma and discrimination towards these people. Um, and so this really perfectly fit kind of like my areas of study and also my personal interest for LGBTQ plus advocacy. advocacy. Um, and with their organization, they raise awareness for social action, whether it be for healthcare, whether it be for um, just human rights for all people. And it was something that really spoke to me as I was looking at different uh, intern internship opportunities. Thank you. <laughs> um, I think one of my main reservations going into it was how an online experience would compare to like being there in person, which I had originally planned for before the pandemic. But uh, it was a really great opportunity. We had um, bi-weekly cultural immersion lessons and then chats with our local buddies. So um, once a week, we would do our cultural immersion where it'd be a different topic every week, talking about either politics, healthcare, history, um, any kind of thing like that. And then we'd also have another where we have a chat where we just kind of were able to talk to local Ecuadorians, um, compare our experiences, just compare our everyday life, talk about our intern. Um, our internship experiences, which was really great to kind of get that uh, community feeling where you're remote. And then moving forward, um, I really will take all the lessons that I learned from this opportunity. I think this experience taught me uh, humility, uh, confidence, understanding, and really just all for just the amazing history and culture that is around us in the world. And outside of the academic and professional growth that I experienced throughout this opportunity, um, I feel so much more confident now in my own abilities as a future nurse, as a Spanish language learner, and as a um, LGBTQ advocate. And this is really the kind of experience that you can't get if, you, if, we, if we stay here um, within the county, within the state, within the country. And I am really grateful for everything mm -hmm. that I was able to learn. So. I'm going to close my presentation with um, one of the, oh, sorry, you're, you're good, with one of the native Quechua words that we learned in our cultural ex exchange. And it's called Wasipichai, and this means new beginnings. And so this experience really was a new beginning for me to uh, change the way I see the world and change the way I look at my studies and how I'm able to make an impact. So thank you all for listening. Um, I, I think it's probably better if we leave all of our questions to the end and then we'll um, actually a couple of our presenters they have to leave early so I think oh, we should yeah. do it now. Oh, okay. Okay, then yes. Go ahead if you have questions for Anne. Yeah, of course. I'm, I'm curious to know, you know, you're a Spanish major, but did you encounter a new vocabulary that was, you know, a professional vocabulary that you hadn't encountered yet? Yeah, definitely. A lot of my Spanish is mainly geared to either like conversational or like kind of like literature based um, analyzing um, text in the Spanish language. So um, this was really great for me to kind of learn a new healthcare vocabulary that I didn't really have a lot of exposure to before and definitely was very helpful, kind of like relating to my nursing experience. Thank you. And as a nursing major, so a lot of nursing majors think that they can't do an abroad experience because you have such a tight schedule. 
what's your advice for people so that they can have these experiences? Yeah, I think I think that was also one of my fears kind of as uh, going through the nursing program, but especially with my experience doing it in the summertime and also doing it um, online, I think that was one way that you can kind of get around that. And also just kind of getting into uh, the process of searching for that experience early when you know there's a little bit more wiggle room with like with your schedule i think that's very helpful anything else okay thank you everybody thank you so much. Thank you. sneak out to go to a class but thank you <laughs> um so our next speaker is diego who actually physically went to san francisco to do a business development internship um, at Windfall. And the reason that Diego was able to do that on an Emerson is because he's an international student. Domestic students need to go abroad in order to get these same experiences. Thank you. One sec. Yeah, my name is Diego Espinola, I'm a senior. I'm a computer science and economics major. And last summer I was able to do an internship in San Francisco with, with Winfall. Um, the next one. The, when I saw the description of the internship was that they were looking for a business development intern that will help them um, develop a bigger relationship with the partner. So it was a lot related to business, but something interesting about the the description of the of the internship was that they were looking for someone um, like as a business development intern. You will be supporting the team members across across a range of different departments to complete strategic projects and tasks crucial to day to day operation of the company. And I think this is really uh, this was really important, and you will understand later why of the presentation. Because they were looking uh, when I saw this, I thought that they were looking for someone that, in a way of of the business, you will help and work with other departments, but it was a lot more than that. And I will explain that later in the presentation. So what is Winful? Um, they are a data company uh, that with the mission of calculating the net worth of each individual. And they're trying to do this because they realized, or the CEO and uh, founder Arup realized that other data companies were calculating wealth uh, based on paychecks and loans and stuff like that. But they re realized that a better way to calculate where, uh, wealth by, was by net worth, which is uh, net worth is uh, the cars that you own, the houses that you own, the investments that you have, and stuff like that. And he realized that that was a better way. They wanted to do this because, for example, they started working with nonprofits um, and they wanted to help nonprofits to get uh, bigger donations by providing information of the individual that they have in, the, in, the, in their company data. Uh, so they, um, Arup saw that opportunity, he started to develop that, and then later on, they were also able to work with private uh, businesses too. So how did I find this internship? Well, I highlighted connections because that's how I found it more than anything. Um, Harry Morrow, which is an alumni from Harvard College, he plays soccer here too for the D1 team, and he is a business and computer science major. So when he sent the invitation for this, uh, internship, he sent it to the business department, but I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a business major, so I will never be able to find out about that opportunity until my coach, um, he also sent the invitation to my coach, and he thought that I was a good candidate for this, uh, for this internship based on my computer science major and other business experience that I had before. Um, he contacted me, I went to a lot of uh, interview with, uh, with Winfall, and at the end I got the, the internship, but after I was in in San Francisco, I asked him, like, it couldn't just be only because of my connection with the coach. And he told me that, no, it was more than that. It was also because of the grades that I had. Uh, of course, they're looking, based on a, that I'm a student athlete, they're looking for someone that at least a 3.5 GPA or higher. So I made that requirement. That was good. They were looking for someone who is also involved in extracurricular activities. I am part of uh, SAC, the student athlete group. And I was doing that. And also, they were looking for someone who who had other internship experience before. Uh, let me go really quick about this, but in my sophomore year, I was able to do an internship with uh, Agati, which is a sustainable women's work company. But that internship was easier compared to this one because I was more than anything learning. I was not like directly working on projects that were gonna influence the, 
uh, or affect the, or impact the, the company. So it was more like learning more than anything. And someone outside of Agadi was helping me and telling me what to do and how to take the best experience and stuff like that. And my, my junior year, I was able to work for NDC, the National Development Council, that was the term. And that one was like the next step, which was working a little bit more direct with um, projects that were gonna impact the business. Um, and this is a uh, nonprofit company, so I was able to uh, work in uh, calling some clients and answering some questions and also getting information and putting it in Excel and stuff like that. So it was more involved, but not the whole experience of going to an office and working with a project and stuff like that. So after that, I was finally uh, able to work with uh, for Winful, where I needed to go to the office in San Francisco, work from eight to six every day, working projects. So I think he told me that they knew that the, this internship was going to be harder. So they were looking for someone who already has some experience and that's how it helped. Uh, it worked perfect for me. So um, like, remember how I said the description about the job? Well, uh, at the end, I learned that they were looking for someone who not just wanted to work there in, as a business uh, intern, but someone who was uh, willing to work in any, any job that they had there. So they were looking for a student who was open to work at, in anything. And because Harry, he's a product manager, I was more a product manager intern, to be honest, than a business intern. Um, I was, uh, this, this description was from Google, but it says that a product manager is a professional role that is responsible for the development of the product of, uh, for an organization. And yeah, I learned that a product manager takes care of the product of the, of the business. Uh, we contact the customers and we listen to them and we hear uh, what, they, what they like about the product, what they don't like, and we make sure that the quality of the product is at its highest for the client. At the same time, we're working with all the departments, the business department, the sales department, the data analyst department with engineers and directly to the CEO. So it was a role that we need to listen to all of them and make sure that the product works for everyone and everyone is working to make the product better. Um, and also we work in innovation because as a product manager, you need to make sure that the company continue growing. And like, to do this, you need to think about new products to make uh, the company access to more and more products. Thank you. So um, my accomplishment about this, well, uh, working hard paid and yeah, they, at the end they offered me a job and I'm gonna be able to go back and May 22 after I, 2022 after I graduate. So that was, that was a great accomplishment. Um, <laughs> Also, I got a lot of experience in the business side, even I was not directly working with business, but because I wanted to actually learn how a business grows and how it operates, I was able to learn about all this stuff there. At the same time, I learned about all their skills, like part of my computer science major that when I was there, now that I'm still here in college, I have been able to apply uh, so many things that I learned there to my classes. And now everything makes sense of all that I understand why we learned this in, in classes. And at the end, I made a lot of connections. Aru, which is the CEO and, and founder, his office was in front of me and he teach me so many things. Harry, my, my boss, and then uh, Dan, which is uh, the boss and the, the guy responsible of the business department. So I was able to, to build those connections too. And well, about San Francisco, because I was working a lot, I was not able to actually experience a lot of the city or learn a lot of the, of the city, to be honest. But at the end, it was great weather, an amazing city. I was, I was also preparing for coming back for my last season. So I was playing in so many soccer fields. Uh, my boss invited me to play with him. Uh, the CEO invited me to some uh, restaurants too. So I was, I was able to experience the city. I was also experienced that I was also being able to experience living there alone in a new city that I never uh, went before. And that, that, that was great. Um, about this and everything that I learned about this that I want to do in my future. Well, first, I want to apply everything of this for the actual job when I go back there in May. And then second, I want to do the same thing that uh, Harry did to me, which is after I'm in a better position of the, of the company and everything, look back and look for another student who is here and wants an opportunity like this and help him uh, accomplish that opportunity too. Thank you. Questions. Well, it sounds like making connections is really the thing that you're you're stressing here. How important it is to take opportunities that come your way and grab them. And I wonder if you are having, you know, this is a small group here, but are you able to give this 
this talk or what you've learned to other people in the business department. I know you're not in the business department, but it seemed like you would be a great asset. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I will, I will be happy to help anyone that I can. Yeah, well, I'm not I, in the business department, <laughs> <laughs> but it sounds like that you would be useful, like to do a um, a um, scholar showcase on this. Yeah, of course. I'm, I'm always willing to help anyone that I can. With career services. <laughs> yeah. Do you, um, since you were in San Francisco such a brief time and you said you didn't have enough time to explore the city, mm -hmm. do you have a list of things you want to see when you go back in May and move there? <laughs> well, there was so many things. Um, I was able to, for example, go visit the Golden, Golden Gate and stuff like that, but from what Harry told me, there's so many things that I need to go back and hook. And yeah, uh, after I go back, at least that summer, I'm going to make sure that I... I don't have something specific, but there's still too much to learn about San Francisco. So for sure, when I go back, I'm gonna do something about it. It's a pretty cool city, yeah. yeah. Is your family happy that you're staying in the US? Yes, yes, they're closer. Yeah, I'm gonna be closer to them when I go back. So yeah, they're happy. Any other questions? Okay, thank you. How did you feel when you were first time, like starting your job here, there? In San Francisco. The first day there in San yeah, Francisco. Yeah. I was I was really nervous at the beginning, of course. Uh the first day that I walked into the office, it was right to work. Like <laughs> they told me, here's your desk, uh here's the computer, uh please start finding this and this. And at the beginning, I was I had no idea what was gonna happen. Uh the good stuff is that Harry was his desk was right in front of mine. So I just looked at him and I said, like, all right, I need some guy in here, like. What, how do I do this? And he was really patient with me. Uh, he explained me exactly what I needed. And then I think it was just the first week when I needed to get into rhythm. And then after that, it was easier. Uh, all the time, the CEO was like getting close. Of course, I was getting nervous because I wanted to give him a good impression. But then after I learned that it's just about applying everything that you learn in other internships, college, doing that. And, and it will, if, if you work hard, it will come easier. Is this an actual picture of your your office? No, but it's, it's really close. It's it's really that's why I, look, I wasn't also. They asked me to, to take pictures, but again, it was so busy that I wasn't able to take so many pictures. But the office looks so similar to the one that we have that I picked that one. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um. So I just want to remind you all that there are refreshments if you want to get something. And Mo, don't let your food get cold. Go yeah, ahead. Yeah. Don't worry about that. Too. <laughs> Okay. The mother's in the room. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Eat it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> we need the calories. Um, <laughs> all right. So our next person is Ankita Ball, and she did an internship through Kaya as well. And I just want to point out that we have four students that did Emerson's this past summer, and out of the four, half of them are international students. Um, so it just, it just, these are students that are trying to take advantage of all the different things. And I think that we should make sure that every student takes advantage of all the cool things we have to offer here. Um, and the Emerson family has been so generous. I um, I hope that anyone who's listening um, or you know the students that are here are taking it are going to take advantage of these things. Um, so Ankita did a Kaya internship also in Ecuador with Robots Crate Research, and I'm just going to let you. Why don't we hold on a second? You guys didn't get any winter cookies and you shouldn't. <laughs> I have a team dinner, so I need to leave too. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. I'm a teacher. I'm a teacher. And mom. You can ask Mo. I, I, right, I check up on it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's kind of another kind of. <laughs> <laughs> it's a global ambassador. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> 
Black Commons and family relatives. Yeah, that's right. So you, you said your family's from Guyana? Yeah, my mom's side is, my dad's side is. See, you have oh, things in common. Yeah. yeah. Are you I am. Oh, you know. What part of your family is from? Uh, outside of Georgetown. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you for being here. Um, I want to start by saying that I think my public speaking skills can still improve, so bear with me on this. Um, I'm a biochem senior, and over this past or like past summer, I worked as a research assistant with a company based in Quito, Equator. So these are the few uh, topics I want to highlight about uh, highlight on uh, during my presentation today. Uh, first of all, we are going to start with a bit of introduction, and then I'm going to go on to uh, describing my internship and how I found it, my main duties and responsibilities, the accomplishments I achieved, and the key takeaways, uh, my appreciation for the different culture I just learned about, and definitely the applications which I predict uh, I can have or uh, see uh, for my future. So I worked with a company called Robots Create. It's a local company which deals with uh, making avatars and uh, broadcasting their telepresence. They have a time short history that I wrote down and I would like to use this cheat sheet to just read it out. So the creator of this organization had a traffic accident that left him bedridden when he was seven years old. Since then, his life changed drastically and even though he eventually recovered, the ideas of finding alternatives to these type of situations remain. That, that is how this idea began back in 1985 as a dream that within the following years began, like became his life. So he I, dedicated his whole life into creating and innovating new gadgets and like medical devices and everything. So that the bacteriophages and artificial spleen is a longer video about me talking about my project towards the end of the internship, but we can watch a tiny like, tail, uh, like trailer about this company. Um, so, yeah. In a cold place, robots like me endure freezing temperatures. But now it is time to get back into action. We are interactive robots for playing in a funny way. You can move letters, push buttons, control machines only by thought what you practice to become an astronaut. We have inventions for you. So come on to my party in robots crate. You can complete this awesome exhibit. Welcome, human machines. So they work in different kinds of robots and artificial intelligence, and sometimes they would come up to like New York City and present or uh, be in competitions. Um, Next slide. Uh, these are some other project examples like over the summer they were working on a solar tree so that they could capture carbon dioxide and probably use it to make other kinds of resources like maybe water or um, hydropower or mechanical power something like that and they also make uh, dragon robots which can be seen in mu museums and they would interact with um, children and like other people but my project uh, involved with designing a prototype for a medical device. Mm -hmm. So I worked uh, I worked to create a prototype of a medical device which could be wearable. Uh, and it was an artificial spleen. But um, it's it's like I don't know how much can be implemented because obviously I don't have the exact amount of knowledge for it to be completed and used as an artificial plane in human. So that was just a prototype. And I found this uh, project via Kaya Responsible Travel. So what I had to do was basically tell them my interest and they helped me find it like Anne. 
Uh, and then I filled out the Emerson application uh, by doing S's and budget sheets, uh, which I got a lot of help from, from the Office of Global Education. So my duties involve definitely reading a lot of research papers and watching a lot of related videos because before this summer, I had no idea of like phage therapy, which I worked with. So phage therapy is a therapy where they use viruses to treat a bacterial infections. Now, Western medicine do not really recognize this type of therapy yet, but if you go back to the Eastern uh, countries like <coughs> Georgia, so you can see that like more than 200, for more than the past 200 years, they have used uh, viruses as a way to treat bacterial infections. And for some reason, I think like viruses, we see viruses as like the deadliest thing, especially due to COVID. But if it's helping to treat bacterial infection, that would be useful because we know there's a higher resistance to antibiotics every, with every year. And then definitely the prototype design which I had to do from scratch. So I didn't get any ideas on what it could look like. So I had to come up with ideas like whether it's going to be circle or whether it's going to be a rectangular cubicle box, something like that. Then I definitely had to present my results and update uh, on my progress to my cohort. So since there were uh, other people working on different projects like the solar tree, we were kind of presenting both of our progresses to each other. So. To my cohort, my supervisor, and there would sometimes be experts like a microbiologist from their uh, government hospital or a PhD candidate who knew something related to phage therapy, and they would just give me feedback on my project. This was the top three were mostly my individual project, and the bottom three dealt with the cultural uh, aspect of my internship, which is very common to end. Like we would have weekly presentations on different aspects of Ecuadorian culture, like art, music, food, modern history. And then again, the body chats where we kind of ex exchange our personal experiences with colleagues from both US and Ecuador. And uh, so my supervisor was really nice, uh, Diego. He was my supervisor. He had a colleague and she would sometimes join our meetings and we would kind of talk in Spanish so that my Spanish could improve. So I really appreciated that. <laughs> Again, the yapping gachos, we started out uh, by doing this cooking class. I tried my best. That's the perfect <laughs> one on the left. <laughs> but this is a, a potato stuffed potato pancake kind of dish. It's really deep fried, filled with cheese. You can either have it with breakfast or as a brunch, but there's no rule against that. You cannot have it for breakfast. So you can have it for breakfast, oh, dinner too. Uh, this is just a screenshot from one of our cultural sessions. I think we were talking about music and art and also like, oh, so they were talking about day seven, uh, Inga, Inga Purka. I don't know if I'm doing the pronunciations right, but they were talking how a potential vacation there, a week vacation could look like, and they gave us uh, like budgeting and where we could go. So that was really nice. So my major accomplishments out of everything I learned, I have chosen top three, which is definitely my final prototype design. I do not know that how much it is gonna be implemented in their future work, but for me, that was an accomplishment. Accountability to self, because it was not super well structured. It wasn't like, oh, you have to do 10 questions by 5 p.m. So I had to take out time and I was like, okay, I have to do work on this. I don't know what is this all about. So I have to research and come up with an idea. So accountability to self. And then, uh, lastly, the knowledge about keto. I mean, I shouldn't say keto, but equator, uh, because there are a lot of things I did not know about it. And I feel like my perspective has got broader after this uh, internship. My takeaways of appreci appreciation from this internship was definitely the work, work culture. Um, when I say work culture, it's very, it's not very, oh, I'm the boss, you're my like, like employees. It's very like, okay, I really wanna get to know you. Like, so how, like, will you get this work done? Okay, but like, do you have other responsibilities? You should, my family should come first more, you know? Like, it was very like, 
okay, we are a team, not like there's straight uh, hierarchy. So I really like that. Definitely the networks, as Diego also mentioned, that uh, my network, my relationship I had with my cohort and my colleagues and my like immediate supervisors. And again, the different perspectives, like uh, maybe I, I thought about something in a particular way and other people didn't. And I had to be like open towards it. Oh, by open, but I don't mean that I had to accept that, but at least like understand what they were talking about. So this is actually the design of my final device. Again, I do not know how much of this will be implemented in their final project. Um, this above diagram, I used Google Docs to create it. And then the right one, I used a CAD software. It's computer-aided design. So I used computer software to create the design. If I cannot really talk a lot about the device because I signed a non-disclosure agreement because it is an innovation company. So I don't know. <laughs> but again, my uh, project involved like involved with using phage therapy, which is the virus to treat bacterial infection, especially like with people, let's say they if they don't have a spleen. So like it's kind of an artificial spleen, but not really, yeah, it's in the air. Uh, this is me presenting my results. Uh, there's someone from the uh, Solar Tree project that was there. I can go to <laughs> awkward picture. <laughs> Some interesting facts about Ikarar, according to me. Uh, so they have frequent changes in their government ruling party. Like it's not like they can have a particular ruling party for four years and then you do election. It's like they can have a ruling party for three months and then have another one for a year and they can make rules so like their constitution is con continuously changing a lot of volcanoes so my supervisor when he was young apparently there was a volcano which erupted and the smoke was too much in keto that they had to e evacuate uh, for a week and leave uh, like leave keto which was the capital and go live in the outskirts, outskirts of keto because there were so much ashes and smoke and the third one I really liked was like the high quality of living at such an affordable price. So maybe, maybe I should go to you know, <laughs> I cannot afford this life. <laughs> <laughs> so application, I say researching skills because I had to do a lot of research, like keep on searching. So researching skills and independence. Again, like it comes back to like, taking the time out to do your work and then work again on it and then work again on it and then asking your supervisor as a last resort. <laughs> Being patient and open-minded, I couldn't just ask my supervisor uh, for something and I would like, expect him to answer right away because there was this time gap in the time zone and also like he was uh, dealing with a lot of other projects, not just mine. And open-minded was to to ideas because my project was developing a prototype from the scratch. So it could completely be wrong. And the, I had to like be open-minded to accept the uh, positive uh, feedback. And I think I elaborated a lot on accountability just yourself. Oh, this is from the Kaya cohort. So you see, I guess this is the same picture kind of as Anne showed. There's a few people. Uh, this was towards the end. At the beginning, we were they were working with two sessions. So as one of the sessions was ending, we started. So there were more people towards the end. There was less people. Um, and thank you for being here. <laughs> uh, any questions? Thank you. There's nothing wrong with your public speaking skills. <laughs> <laughs> it's because I know everyone here. <laughs> I haven't had you in a class since you were a freshman. Yes, I had. I went there twice, right? Yes, and then you, you moved on. But Sorry about that. <laughs> I don't, right? I'll never forgive you. What is your major? I'm a biochemistry major. And so how it's how is this going to apply to your future? Actually, it is being applied right now. Here's why and how. So I, were, I was talking about phage therapy, right? It's about how these viruses can uh, help to create, like, treat bacterial infections. So with my senior thesis right now, 
I'm trying to see how this virus called MS2 uh, attacks E. coli, which is a bacteria you find so readily in our gut system. Yeah, I'm working on that. And in the future, I really wanna work on uh, either phage therapy, like the virus therapy or antibiotic resistance because we are gonna run out of antibiotics soon. So I think those are definitely my top two research interests. Cool. Yeah. More questions? So I have a question about Ecuador. So where would you go in Ecuador if you, if you had a chance to go there on vacation? Would you go to Cuenca or somewhere else? I would definitely go to Quito and then Galapagos Island. Because in high school, that's where I learned evolution up here. Like, do you, have you guys heard about the beak thing, how different based on where the nutrients, uh, the, like there was this particular bird which who had different beaks, depending on the part of the island they yes. lived. So mm -hmm. definitely Galapagos Island. Cool. Yeah, I haven't been to Galapagos either. <laughs> well, Thank you so much. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. Um, for someone who like has never done Spanish before, do you think you'd be like at a disadvantage when applying? I do not think so, especially if a company is based on keto, because like people at this company, they were so fluent in English, and they have they like kind of regularly come to the U.S. for conferences or talk or just to visit because it's so close to the US. But other parts of Ecuador, I'm not too sure about. I feel like people who are in the city are very accustomed to like US and work a lot. I think I think you would find um, that it's because of they're in the biotech industry and not in other industries. In uh -huh. That's yeah. not necessarily the case in other yeah. yeah, you have to research, I guess, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But if you're interested, Runya, through Kaya, they'll they'll place you, mm -hmm. and it really wouldn't kill you to learn Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I forgot. They actually asked me to take uh, like those you know Spanish Quizlet tests at the beginning to place you at a thing. It's just formality. Mm -hmm. I think you should be good, in especially a biotech company, if you just can say, oh, like, buenos dias, como estas, gracias, <laughs> all those stuff. So our last speaker, not least, is Lexi. Is it, it's Lexi, right? Yeah. Actually, um, so it says Alexandra, but I, in, you introduced yourself initially at the beginning of the semester. As well. Either it's fine. Okay. So... Lexi works um, also through Kaya on an education internship or an education equity internship in South Africa, which was completely different from what you've just heard. So you, you're hearing about three different Kaya internships and all of them are entirely different, which is so cool. Yeah, um, so this is not my original plan. <laughs> um, this was a relocation of a relocation. I was <laughs> supposed to go to Belize in June of 2020. That did not happen for obvious reasons. <laughs> um, and I was going to be helping make sculpture gardens at an orphanage where they would do art therapy. Didn't happen. <laughs> so then this next summer, uh, we found something similar because I was like, I want to do arts and education together because I'm in the education program for the Peace Corps. And they found me one and it was music after school programs being worked into the art or being worked into like the regular education system. And I was like, awesome, love it. I love music, I play the cello, I'm in musical fraternity, like I love music. And then the day that I was supposed to start doing it, the organization got back to us and said, oh, we've actually shut down since we have accepted you as an intern. <laughs> um, and then, so my internship was for two months and for the first month, I was just trying to find a different internship. Um, and then I got with a group called Inkai South Africa. Ta-da! Um, or Inkind SA, as they'll refer to themselves often. Um, and they had just started this robotics program. Um, they are rough, they're centered in Cape Town, but they go into other areas. So it's like roughly Cape Town. 
Um, they especially focus on the Eastern Cape and the South Cape. Uh, they had started robotics just then and coding just then, but they had done writing competitions prior and worked in libraries in the area to help preserve um, indigenous languages that were dying off. And they thought coding and robotics as a form of another language. And instead of learning English or Spanish or French, they could teach coding and that would be a way to help work um, the new generation into a global economy. Uh, yes, this was a virtual internship and it was primarily conducted through WhatsApp, um, Zoom sometimes, but Zoom was always pickier uh, for our call. So it was typically done through WhatsApp. Um, while I was there, I was making introductory coding programs for children in between primary and secondary education. So like sixth grade-esque is what they could best compare it to um, with the education system in America. Uh, I didn't really have a lot of coding experience. I have taken one coding class at Hartwick. It's the Lego robotics program that Professor Lickman teaches in the J terms. And then I spent one month in high school doing a program with Pixar, but it was very limited. I would not consider myself a coding expert, <laughs> um, but I needed to learn how to code. And so I had to spend time learning how to code while I was supposed to be making lesson plans to teach others how to code. <laughs> um, and these were turned into lesson plans for teachers so they could give it to teachers in various areas of Cape Town. Um, and then I was also making worksheets for the students to work through. And yeah, the program that I used was a program made by Google. It's called Google Scratch or just Scratch. Um, it's a drag and drop coding. So instead of using numbers and letters, you're able to go into like where it says mission and grab a blue block and put it into like inside of an orange block. And instead of saying crazy lingo, it says turn right. <laughs> Uh, this was easy for me, as well as people who would also be introduced to coding. Um, but yeah, they interlocked and performed tasks, and it played out in characters which the students could design themselves, or they had pre-made characters. Uh, the formatting of how I went through this is the students would be given an introduction to the section where they would just kind of learn what each variable in the section did. Because um, on occasion, it would say funny things like optometry. And I was like, OK. <laughs> but it just meant like your character could see something from a certain distance away. And the students need to learn what that section meant before they could add it to a code. Um, the students were then given challenges, which their teacher would help run them through. Um, and they would do this solely or in groups, depending on the teacher's preference. And they would be given a challenge like, move your sprite, which is what the characters were called, 10 paces up, turn left, and then do a spin. And it was only after they did this that they could do some freeform learning and just kind of play around. Because I think that's very important when you're learning how to do something is, what can I do on my own? Um, after this, students would add a section of code to a larger code. And this would be, good, this would be done as they went through the eight sections. Um, and at the end, they would get like the Google dinosaur game. <laughs> your spray, of, which you designed, would jump over three objects on the ground of your choice going in various heights. And you could set up whether you wanted it to be random or growing objects. And as you went, you would collect the coin at the top, it would make a little ding, and it would have a counter. And if you hit the object, your sprite would die. <laughs> yeah. Um, unfortunately, this has yet to be implemented uh, because South Africa has been going through a lot lately. And they also have a lack of funding right now because of everything that's going on. No one really has money to spare. Um, we did go to one presentation where I was able to you know, present my codes to a donor. Unfortunately, that donor was not able to follow through because South Africa is going through a coup at that time. <laughs> And they went back it, and they shut back down because of COVID. So, 
Um, I did encounter some challenges during my internship. The first was virtual African time. <laughs> I had thought African time was a joke because um, <laughs> I have some friends who are African students. They showed like 10 minutes. I was like, where are you? They're like, oh, I'm on African time. And I thought it was just a joke to be funny. <clears throat> But then people would show up like two hours late to a virtual meeting and I would be in bed because the meeting in my time started at 930. And then they'd be like, oh, I showed up later. Like this time I was like, that is 1130. I am asleep. <laughs> um, but apparently African time is a real thing. Um, COVID had a great effect. They shut back down. And so that meant the people who were like working on creating actual robots, which the coding would attach to couldn't go and make the robots. They couldn't set up the classrooms for coding. Um, there's also, I talked to people who are doing other things for in kind of say, like the language programs and the writing programs, and they didn't have access to go to the libraries. Mm -hmm. um, and then the biggest thing was during this coup, there were riots and people were very scared. Um, there was a large loss of technology and a loss of communication. And so I just had to like keep doing my thing, but I still wasn't sure like what was happening over there, what was happening to the people I was trying to talk to. Like, and it was just kind of really scary, like just on a personal level. Um, and unfortunately my main supervisor, her husband did end up dying. And so she has had to like step down from her role. So questions. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, that was good work. <laughs> it's not really a question, it's more just like a statement. Like I also took uh, like robotics, so I fully understand how you felt when it came to coding. And yeah. uh, it, it sucks, it's, 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 <laughs> yeah. it's really hard, but it is a good skill to learn, even though like I had a partner and he focused more on the coding because he was better at it and I did more of the building mm -hmm. because of like, like I like to, like be constructive and I'm also art major, so it came pretty easy to me. But Google Scratch is a I'd probably say an easier program as well. So yeah. it's good for kids at that level. And it's I think it's really good that you did like that program. Thank you. Yeah, Lego, Lego Robotics was fun and I also I could do the coding, but the person who I worked with ended up becoming a computer science major. So he more knew what he was doing. Yeah. And I was originally a sculpture major. So I was like, I'll build it. Yeah. <laughs> well, I just want to say, because I was uh, Lexi's on-campus supervisor, yes. that everything that possibly could have challenged you in this, like riots, <laughs> like, like everything happened. Like, there were so many ba barriers that you had to face, but you did beautiful work. Her work was really, really impressive. Thank you. And um yeah, like you, I'm, it's such a shame that it's not being used, but it should be, it could be used elsewhere. Yes, we're hoping. They're trying to like rebuild everything that's happening right now. So I've talked to a couple people. Unfortunately, Olefu, my original supervisor, has stepped down. Um, but I am talking to other people and they're trying to get things up and running again. So fingers crossed. <laughs> but you could use it in the, the crop program um, locally. It's a, school, a program for after school. It's after school enrichment in mm -hmm. um, resource constrained rural communities. And they do have, they have all kinds of technology that they have access to through Title IX, but the, they don't have teachers who know how to use it. Oh, they like, know that that it's existed. really something that you might be able to use locally in some of the small rural districts around here. Yeah, I'll definitely look into it. I didn't know that that was Yeah, just touch base with me on that. Absolutely. Yeah. I have a question. Let's see. Um, and it's not directly related to the work, but more the experience, because you had to deal with worry for your for the people you were working with. And I know that emotionally it had to have been very difficult. Have you um, been able to reconnect with those people? And have you have you lost or have you lost con connection with them? And how are you feeling about everything? I was able to touch base with them like frequently ish um, during the program. I haven't heard a lot from them since because they're also just trying to make it through. Um, no one that I had directly worked with has has been lost. Um, but like my main supervisor lost her husband. 
I know someone who lost both of her children and like she was pregnant at the time she lost that child just due to stress it caused a miscarriage and so like that's really hard to like see people go through that but yeah um overall at the beginning I was like very upset that this was virtual so I was like I really thought I was going to go and go abroad and stuff um I realized I probably would have been sent back <laughs> but I think even then it's been nice to like kind of be able to reconnect with them because of technology and stuff and I don't know if I would have been able to do that if I was in person like have their phone numbers been able to zoom them so you think you'll get to go once things settle? Maybe. <laughs> I would thank love you. to. <laughs> well, thank you for sharing and thank to all of our, our speakers. And I know we have another special treat. Um, we have guests from Uzbekistan who are going to talk about the culture there. Yeah, I'm ready. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Could you email it to me, the presentation? I don't have connection, so I don't know. So I will be sitting here if yep. you don't mind. Yeah. Aren't you graduating? Thank you. Oh, that's right. We have to go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.